Welcome to Electra Online. Now let's talk about the South Pole of Mars. There are some similarities to the North Pole and some unusual differences as well. So let's take a look at them. Well, first of all, here's a little picture of what the polar cap looks like. It is quite a bit smaller than the polar cap at the North Pole. Uh, the, on the lengthwise, it's about 420 kilometers in length, about 260 miles and about 300 kilometers wide. When you compare it to the North Pole, it's about a thousand kilometers across. Now, there used to be a time that they didn't think that the South Polar Cap had water ice in it. They thought that it was completely made up of carbon dioxide ice. Now, they did know that the Northern Polar Cap had a significant amount of uh, water ice in it. Probably the reason why they were misled is because there's a permanent layer of carbon dioxide on top of the Polar Cap as much as eight meters thick and the sensors probably couldn't pick up that there was water ice underneath. But now we know there's lots of water ice on the southern polar cap as well, and it's estimated to be about 1.6 million cubic kilometers, about the same amount as what you find in the northern polar cap. Now you say, well, wait a minute, if the northern polar cap is much larger than the southern polar cap, how come there's the same amount of water ice in it? Well, for one thing, the southern polar cap is thicker, about three kilometers thick, where the northern polar cap is about two kilometers thick. Now, that's enormous. That's almost two miles thick versus a little bit over a mile for the northern cap. And in addition, there's additional layers of ice that extend beyond the polar cap that are subsurface, which we've been able to detect, but which don't readily show up on the picture as well. Now, that's a lot of ice. If all of that ice were to melt, and the surface of Mars was flat, it would add up to about a layer of 20 plus meters across the entire surface of the planet. So the entire surface of the planet would be under about 20 meters of water or about 60 feet of water. So there's an enormous amount of water ice locked up in the two polar caps. I always think it's, it's funny when they send up another mission to Mars and they claim, well, one of the major purposes for the mission is to determine if water ever existed on the surface of Mars. Well, the fact that we have so much water ice locked up in the polar caps and must have gotten there somehow, we must have assumed, we must assume that somehow there must have been a lot of liquid water in the past that somehow got locked up in the polar caps. Well, at least that's one big piece of evidence I think we have that there was a lots of water on Mars before. Now notice, of course, in the Southern Hemisphere, there's a lot more mountainous regions compared to the Northern Hemisphere. And so if you take a look at the correlation of that picture over there, you can see that the top painted in blue simply indicates that there was much lower in elevation and presumably an ocean once upon a time when there was a lot of water on Mars. Now, if we take all that water and we distribute it over the lower lying regions here in this large crater region in the region up above, you'd have an ocean that's well over 100 meters deep on average across the northern hemisphere of Mars. So yes, there must have been a lot of water on Mars in the past, and now it's simply locked up subsurface and in the polar caps. So what else could we talk about? All right, yes, every winter, well, the winter for the southern hemisphere, when it gets really cold, the atmosphere begins to freeze up at about 80 degrees Celsius below zero, 80 degrees below zero, um, carbon dioxide in gaseous form will actually freeze up and begin to snow down to the ground and a layer of carbon dioxide snow will form across the polar region of the Southern Hemisphere. And by the end of the winter, that will reach out to about a 4,000 kilometer diameter region of uh, carbon dioxide snow about a, a meter thick, about three feet thick. And so a significant portion of the atmosphere will actually be locked up in the polar cap at that point. That's the, what they call the annual polar cap. And we can assume that about 20% of the atmosphere is lost. So atmospheric pressure tends to change a lot on Mars due to the carbon dioxide ice being frozen out at the northern polar cap and especially at the southern polar cap because of the inclination of Mars and the orbit being very elliptical on Mars, Mars ends up being farther away from the sun during the winter at the southern hemisphere. So the, the, sun, the winters are very, very cold at the southern hemisphere and a lot of that carbon dioxide ice will then build up a, a meter thick all across to about 50 degrees south. Now that is from the South Pole all the way to 50 degrees in latitude. And so when you think about that, well, on the Earth, 
at the northern polar cap, if, it were, if ice were to come all the way down to 50 degrees, that would be pretty well at the border of Canada and the United States. So it's a huge region of Mars that gets frozen over where the atmosphere simply freezes and makes a thick layer of carbon dioxide. When it gets warmer, when spring comes and summer comes and all sublimates back into the atmosphere, the atmosphere is restored and the ice then disappears from the surface. What we also did in 2018, a sensor from space was able to determine that below the water, uh, before, below the ice region, and it's not quite where the polar cap is, but a little bit further away from the polar cap beneath some ice, they discovered, because of the, the sensors, they were able to measure the different gravitational forces, they determined there was a subsurface lake about 1.5 kilometers below the surface, about 30 kilometers long, that's about 20 miles in length. So a significant sized lake found almost a mile deep. And then in 2020, several more smaller lakes were, were found in the same region. So we do know, it's of course not a fact because we could have made mistakes in the sensing, but we're pretty sure that subsurface lakes do exist on Mars far enough down where it's warm enough and there's probably enough salty mixture in there that so it doesn't freeze up that they exist in liquid form. Now, of course, almost a mile deep, that would be hard to get to. Another interesting fact is that uh, the elevation of the northern hemisphere on Mars is much lower than the elevation of the southern hemisphere, so that the ice pack at the northern hemisphere falls to about minus 2,000 to minus 5,000 meters below the average elevation of the planet Mars, as opposed to the southern polar cap that exists at about 1,000 to 3,500 meters above the average uh, height of, uh, of the Martian surface which means that atmospheric pressure there would be less and you'd expect that the temperatures would be colder on average at the Southern Hemisphere at the polar caps there because you're at a much higher elevation just like on the Earth it's going to be colder at higher elevations. Another interesting feature of the Southern polar cap is these curved dark lines where there's been more of a melt-off and then dust covering those, those canyon regions so that they absorb more, more sun and so the melting continues to be more progressive in those regions relative to the other regions of the polar cap where there's clean ice on the surface. And what that creates is that creates what we call catabatic winds. Of course, you have this big, thick mountain of ice and the ice gets cool down because it's forced over the polar cap, it cools down, it gets heavier, and then it rushes down the slopes exactly the same way as it does on the Earth's southern polar cap, where these huge catabatic winds that come down from the ice cap at over 100 miles an hour. Matter of fact, the explorer Scott ended up getting caught in one of those catabatic wind storms that can last for days at tremendous temperatures, enormously cold wind chill factors, and he and his entire party ended up succumbing to the cold because of catabatic winds. Well, it turns out we have the same kind of winds on the southern polar cap coming down from the polar cap, but because of the Coriolis force, they tend to have kind of a circular motion, so you can see that they cause the erosion in that kind of circular pattern that you can see everywhere along the edges of the southern polar cap. So it's a, it's a very interesting region, it's a quite fascinating, you see some of the similarities between that and what happens on the Earth. It's also interesting that it's at a much higher level than the southern polar cap versus the northern polar cap. It is much colder down there during the winter time, and it's amazing how much water ice is still locked up in the, both the northern and the southern polar cap of Mars. So Mars therefore is as part of that, I would say Mars is really a very interesting planet of which we know quite a bit and we're going to continue uh, sending probes over there and checking things out a little bit more and we're just going to learn more and more about the planet Mars. But yeah, the southern polar region is an extremely fascinating region.